my people perish for lack of knowledge. I will say that again. My people. They lack, I mean, they perish. They get destroyed. They get oppressed. Because of lack of knowledge. This, the, the, this afternoon, I know I will take some time to teach on some things. I know that it is going to be very prophetic. Because I, I believe with my whole heart. Today marks a new beginning for someone in this house. And I'm not saying that lightly. You will not perish again. You are not going to be destroyed. Destroyed. You will not stay oppressed because of lack of knowledge. And I want us to go to First Kings chapter 18. We want to go from verse 22 to verse 40. Verse 22 to verse 40. And I want you to hear this. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 34. That many, verse, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him from them all. I'll say that again. Many are the afflictions. That are you know, that are thrown at the righteous. But then the Lord delivers them from them all. The will of God is that any form of affliction that comes your way does not stay but you get delivered. You get rescued from all of them. We have an altar that destroys all altars that bring affliction. Afflictions come from an altar. But then we have an altar that I want to show you about that destroys all altars that bring afflictions in our lives. It takes an altar to destroy an altar. And I want to explain to you this. How an altar of affliction works. And how it should not work. In your life and in my life. Because we have another altar that destroys the effects of all other altars. Read that place. First Kings chapter 18 from verse, verse 22. 22. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us, let them choose one for themselves, and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire on it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire on it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. When all the, then all the people said, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since you are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name, on the name of Baal from morning till noon. O oh Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. 
and they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is God. Perhaps he is deep in thought, or busy, or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time of the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. They came to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it, large enough to hold two seers of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it the third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are the God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. And answer me, O Lord. Answer me so that these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trenches. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go eat and drink. That's it. Thank you so much. Asante sana. I want you to look at me carefully. Here are two altars. One is going to work, the other one will not work. The altar of the false prophets is not going to work. But the altar of the man of God is going to work. I come to announce right from the beginning every other altar other than the altar Jesus erected for your life are going to be silenced today. I declare by the word of God every other altar that is formed in your land other than the altar that Jesus raised for you and for me today all those other altars will receive the fire of God. They will be consumed. They will be destroyed. And you will be free in the land to prosper where Ahab can do nothing, Jezebel can do nothing. You will prosper in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Eight hundred and fifty prophets. Ahab raised them. Ahab raised them. Jezebel raised them. So that she can remain oppressing the people of God. I'll say that again. She raised those altars with those men and women of God. 850 false prophets so that she can remain oppressing the people of God. An altar of affliction is meant 
to oppress you. And I'll show you how it works. Go with me to the book of Exodus. Chapter 1. We are going to read from verse 7. Up to verse 14. Can I prepare you straight away? We are here for a long time. Please. I'm not in hurry. Somebody must get delivered today. Somebody must stop going in circles today. Somebody's barrenness will stop today. I'm not in hurry. I want to show you how the altars from the other world works. And I want to show you the altar Jesus raised works. And how it destroys all the other works of the other altars. Let's go ahead now. Exodus chapter 1 from verse 7. But the Israelites were fruitful and multiplied greatly and became exceedingly numerous so that the land was filled with them. Then a new king who did not know about Joseph came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become much too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them so they will become even more numerous. Sorry, come. We must deal shrewdly with them or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Rameses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with hard labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. Now, watch this. I want to show you how an altar of affliction works. In, in, in the land of Egypt, the Bible still shows us that there were so many altars that were erected to idols to oppress the people of God. Listen to this. In fact, every single plague in Egypt was dealing with a certain altar in Egypt. Every single plague Every single plague, plague, plague. Every single one of them was dealing with a certain altar. Whether that altar was erected to the moon god or the sun god or the water spirits. Just Give me a moment, you will understand. Follow me very closely. The children of Israel were doing very well. But the king said, unless we do something, these people will go very far. So what do they do? They went to their people and they raised up altars to oppress the children of Israel. How did they work? Number one, the king said, we don't want them to increase. An altar of affliction is meant for you not to increase. You don't move, you know, you don't move beyond where you are. This is where you meet an 
usual losses in life. I am talking about unusual losses. You meet yourself. I mean you are not going anywhere. You are decreasing. Whether it is spiritually or whether it's socially, whether it is materially, you are decreasing. That's what the king said. We don't want them to increase. And number two, a lot of affliction is meant to. To hinder your ability to produce. What does the Bible say? We don't want them to multiply. Can I help you? The enemy will raise an altar. So that your potential does not get realized. The giftings, the anointing, the abilities. Some of you have unusual abilities in business. When it comes to a ministry, whether it is evangelism, whether it is intercession, or the prophetic, or the apostolic hospitality canceling you find that the anointer is raised down so that you don't multiply the potential is killed that's why the bible says every boy child was to be killed so that the women will stay without seed and they cannot be able to produce I want to announce to you we have an altar that destroys all that and I'll show you that in a moment we have an altar that destroys all those other altars and I want to declare by the word of God the only issue here is ignorance Number three. What did Pharaoh say? Listen to this. We don't want them to have valuable relationships. Hear me. Pharaoh said, These people may have people that who will be their friends. People that will who will bring value. To their life. And when they will be in trouble, these people will help them to rise up. And they will crush us. I come to tell you when an altar is raised you get the wrong friends defilers and parasites they just eat what you have they just take everything you have they are not adding value into your life you find yourself confused you want to leave them. But there is something that is tying you to them. I come to announce in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We have an altar that this every bad relationship we have an altar that destroys our relationship with the defilers and parasites people that had no value in our life and that altar connects us it connects us with the people that will add substance in our lives people that will help us that when the enemy will rise up they will be there for us and we will crush them Pharaoh said 
Let's raise up altars all over. So that these people don't increase. They don't multiply. Their potential dies. And not only that. Every valuable relationship. They mess it up. Instead of doing like the woman of Sarephah, the man of God ended up in his house. She received that man gladly. Everybody else was dying. But she lived with her family, eating and drinking. Listen to this. When these altars are raised up, every valuable friendship, you find yourself messing it up. Special grace, eh, special grace that God pours through some people goes to waste. I come to announce there is an altar. There is an altar that silences all these other altars. As it happened in the time of Elijah. As it happened during the time of Elijah. 850 prophets prophets. Their altar was silence. It was silence. And that's it. What I hate about the altars of affliction is that you only work for Pharaoh. You don't work for yourself. You don't work for your children. You don't work for the kingdom. All your efforts. You find your efforts are not benefiting you. Not benefiting your children. You just find yourself. By the the time the paycheck hits your bank. By the time your paycheck hits your bank. You have 55 debts just to be serviced. You are from debt Today. I believe in strategic borrowing. Jesus told the wind, you know, the wife of the I mean sorry. Elisha told the wife of the prophet. Go borrow from your neighbors. That's called strategic borrowing. But now, when there is an altar of affliction, you find yourself in debts you cannot explain. And you are not able to pay them. You run from one church to another. You are even changing jobs. Because I mean you are in debts everywhere. Thank God you don't change your planet. You are, you are still on this, on this planet. But I want you to see something. When a note of affliction is raised up, you cannot be able to plan your finances. No way. No way. Even God cannot have access to your money. Because your money belongs to Pharaoh. You are a slave. 
you are a slave to other people. In other words, this altar is meant to make you not leave an inheritance, a legacy behind. But we have an altar that says a righteous man will leave an inheritance to his children, children. And I will show you how it works. Listen to this. When an altar of affliction is raised up, if you are not working for Pharaoh, you are barren. You invest. You invest. But all your investment drains away. You are barren. You pray. It's like you are barren. You go out to preach or to witness or to serve God but it's like you are barren. Nothing seems to work. You find yourself for come going from one frustration to another frustration. One confusion to another confusion. But I want you to see something. The worst thing about these altars. They kill destiny. They kill destiny. What did Pharaoh say? We don't want these people to increase. We don't want them to multiply. Because if they do that, one day they will be free. They will go to the land of promise. The land God promised Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Their destiny will be destroyed. Let's destroy their destiny. Let's destroy their destiny. Let them go nowhere. That's why, listen. When you are, when an altar is raised up, an altar of affliction, you stagnate in life. I come to announce that is coming to an end today. I come to announce that's the end of it today. I declare to someone by the word of God I say again by the word of God someone in this house someone watching us through the media I declare to you from today you are going places and I declare by the word of God that altar that was raised up in order to limit you in order to limit you limit you spiritually limit you materially limit you in your potential I declare by the word of God from today those limitations are a thing of the past I come to announce to someone in this house you are named will never appear again on that altar. And I declare that by the word of God. Listen to this. Some two children of a man of God they got hold of census. Census. And they had their names. Nalimari na mare tu amao. Abihu and Nabihu whatever. Eh Nabi akana Nabihu orio ogimeta. And listen to this. Nabi kere dio doyo. They raised an altar that was evil before God. Magege die makia barali ya kego gona. Eh kere 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 heaven and consumed them. I want to tell you something. And please listen to this. How are those 
altars erected. So that I show you how Jesus erected. That, that nullifies all those other altars. Listen to this. Number one. Those altars are raised through witchcraft. 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 Ogo. Witchcraft. Ogo. Witchcraft. Ogo. I say witchcraft. Number two. They are raised. Through the, the, the graves. Whereby your name is taken to the grave at night. Or some clothes. Or your money. And it, it is taken to those altars. Sometimes it's under the water. I am... I'm summarizing a very long, I mean, very big message. Sometimes, it's through your ancestors, your family lineage. There were some altars that they raised that makes no child goes beyond form 4. No child keeps a marriage. No child gets children in the normal way. Or the, no child choice health. It was raised through the ancestors. Sometimes it is raised through cults. I'm talking about Satanism. I'm talking about devil worship. I'm talking about astrology. I am talking about juju. Whatever they are. But I want hear me. We have a an altar. We have an altar that silences. My God. We have an altar. We have an altar. We have an altar. We have an altar that silences all these other altars. I want to show you this. I, I, I want to tell you again. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And because of lack of knowledge, you talk about these other altars without talking about this altar. This is the altar of all the altars. This is the altar of all the other altars. I want to declare by the word of God when Elijah, Elijah showed up he told the first prophet raise all your altars raise all of them I'm giving you a chance raise all your altars and the Bible says from morning all the way to three they had their chance I want to declare Claire. They have had your chance. They have had a chance in your life. They have had a chance in your life. But I declare today, 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 that will be raised up and all the altars will be silent they will be dead they will receive the fire of God in the name of Jesus they put your name they put your name in those altars they put your name. They put it on those altars. Let, me do a, let, let us do a prophetic act. Get some paper. 
Write your name. I want those buckets. Bishop, what the bucket tissue? And I don't want them here. I want you to listen to this. The prophetic flows through instructions. I want you to obey these instructions. We are going to have buckets, one near the parking there. There. We'll have a bucket down there. Close to the first year class. That one will represent the underworld. No. The devil, the, the, the devils under the water. We'll have an altar. Outside at that corner. We'll have another bucket. Near the toilet there. That altar. Is that, that which one defiles your life. And you will take your name there. I don't know whether you take your name in all those altars. I told you I'm not in hurry. Somebody's life must be changed today. Some, somebody's life must come out of these altars. Somebody's life must take off today. The altars of affliction must be destroyed Today. I don't know how your name was taken there. Maybe it was taken through witchcraft to pray. Witchcraft to pray. Can I help you? There is an altar against the poor. They said we are not going to eat. We are going to sacrifice until Paul dies. But I come to declare by the word of God. That there is no weapon for me. There is no weapon for me. There is no weapon for me. That is formed against us that shall ever prosper. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. I want to believe you are writing the name. And you are writing the name of someone who know, you know is under the altar of a flesh. I want to. Today. Someone will have a family today. In the name of Jesus. That altar. That was raised by your forefather. I have to receive the fire of God today. It gets silenced today. It gets burnt up today. I declare today. Someone must come out of death. That altar. That was raised through witchcraft. When you witchcraft pray, I declare the fire of God will consume it in the name of Jesus. In a minute, I will show you. Listen to this. I want you to write your name. Give me those papers. Give me those papers. And I'm writing mine. I'm writing the one of my children. My children of war hates. Did you hear what I'm saying? Did you hear what I'm saying? I don't care what altar. Has been raised. They receive the fire of God tonight. I 
think I know how to write my name. Na, na mini, Bishop anajua kuandika jina Thomas. And I think I know how to write the names of my children. Hata na majina ya watoto wake. Shaitani ashindwe. Shaitani ya roho otuo. Ati wan, unawaombea wapa, waone vibaya. Ati roho eradu wa shikomone mauru. Ayi. Afana. I bless the Lord. For all the people in this house. Who have been praying, praying for me. Praying for my children. Baba Sami. I want you to write the name of this church. One of the church prayer cave. Eh what the carry to area kadidoyu what of faith church prayer kiff kiabu I remember Bruce telling me bishop please write my name and the name of my wife Ne kulirika na Bruce yakemwira please tafadhali bishop what the carry to area kwa na ya mtumia wako I'm doing that Ogwo ni gwo bishop wareka All right. Where's Josh? Where's Al? Quickly. Quickly, 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 Josh. Un, quick. Where are you? Come here. Come here, son. Fold them. You are writing something? Oh, I see. Fold them. Fold them very nicely. Fold all of them. All of them together. Give this one to your brother. This is his name. Yeah. Come on, fold them. Fold them, son. Fold them. And the ones that you had written. This is where I want you to go and throw them. Now, I want a few elders. Bishop Nyakwenda Adulega no Nakanida. Follow me as I follow Christ. Mokaro Mirina, Bishop Torela Mira Christo. Elders, where is Mumeweka those buckets? Have you placed those buckets? Are they there? You as you will go and place them uko chini fast here class. Munaweka uko. Munaweka kwa bucket to just the way they are. Go down there. Follow. Just go. Go. Give them a nice hand. Wapigia makofi mazuri. Now listen. You, there is a bucket there. There is a bucket near the, near 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 the whatever. The 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 the, the, the whatever. There is another bucket huko. There is another bucket there. Don't tell your name. Just go throw your name and come back very quickly. Ado ayaki akanita. Neturi na baketi wenoyo. Listen, I want those names there. Listen, they symbolize the altars where they have been thrown. Listen, I will send pastors to go and get your names and bring them here. But listen, nobody will bring his name here. They must come from those altars. Will you do that very quickly and come? Praise team, you should be here by now. Take your name. Wherever you are taking it. Don't forget. Will you do that and come quickly? Give us worship here. Oh my God. That's where they have been kept. I don't know whether it was, however it was written. 
But take it there. Then come very quickly. Give us worship. Hallelujah. And I'm not in hurry. If you are, thank you. Bishop Hallelujah. Yavira Nuga to Rora Murori Waisi Raeli Dore Wahito Nitoro Wagukai Yogi to Igua Ugi to Ikaro Vega Amuke Rogoshi Wito Wagi de Miaka Miaka Yavina Ay, adira no la torara Murori, murori wa isirae Nure wa eto, nure wa eto netara Tu agokaire, tu agokaire o geto igua O geto e korora eda Amokera, amokera Ogoshi wiso Dike hota gota, dike hota, dike hota gota, dike hota ni, dike hota gota re ni. Aiga, muke se mage ganiya. Aiga, dike hota gota re ni. Aiga, meleke se mage ganiya. Oigi re me aka. I want us to read the book of Hebrews chapter 13. 
We will read verse 10. Can I help you? I'm not in a hurry. Somebody's life must have a turnaround. Listen to this. When, you know, Balak wanted to contain the children of God. And to hinder them from going to their destiny. This, this is what the Bible says. In Numbers 23. Have seven altars erected for me. Then I will cast these people. Jesus raised seven altars to bless you. And that's what I want to talk about. And when I talk about that, your name will be collected from those altars of affliction. And it will be brought to the altar of the blessing of the Son of God. I want to declare the cycle of divorce and separation must stop in your family today. That cycle whereby you cannot have a valuable friend. That one who must end. Today. He must Hebrews. Thirteen verse ten. Hebrews chapter thirteen verse ten. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. We have an altar. Tell your neighbor we have an altar. Come on, tell your neighbor we have an altar. And those Old Testament priests that were actually ministering through the law, those ones cannot partake of it. This the altar we partake because of the grace of God. This is, this is the altar that we partake and we receive grace upon grace. That's John 1, 16. We receive grace upon grace. And I want you to know something. This altar is none other than the sacrifice Jesus offered, uh, you know, when he came here. Can I say again? When Balak wanted to contain the people of God, so that they don't go to their destiny. So that they get destroyed in the wilderness. This is what the Bible says. Raise for me seven altars so that I can cast these people. This is in Numbers 23. But listen to this. Jesus. Yes placed himself on seven altars to make you have complete blessing. Number one. Tell your neighbor the major. 
Tell your neighbor the major. Many people don't know the major was an altar. What do I mean by that? Jesus left heaven. He left everything that he had in heaven. The Bible says in Philippians 2. Verse 9. Verse 5 to 9. That he, he did not think that staying in the same state as God has anything to hold on. What did he do? He humbled himself. He, he came to be he came to be like one of us. The manger was an altar where Jesus came and put himself so that God would come to dwell with us. That's why the Bible says his name will be Emmanuel. God together with his own people on the altar at the nature. God came to dwell with with us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Can I help you? God is with us. God is with us. God is for us. God is with us. God is in us. Why? Because Jesus placed himself on the altar. He sacrificed himself and he became like one of us so that God would come and dwell among us come on tell your neighbor devils don't dwell with me come on tell your neighbor tell your neighbor devils have nowhere in me they have nowhere in my life God dwells in me Christ in me Christ in me and me in Christ on that altar God came to dwell with us and if God be for you who can be against you that was the first altar where Jesus placed himself on that major it was an altar to bring God to be with us God is with us God is for us we don't need to go to heaven we don't need to go to the mountain God is with us His his name is Emmanuel. God, together with his own people. And he said he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He said he will be with us until the end of age. I want to declare there is no day, there is no minute that God is not with you. God is with you. Building you up Correcting you, chastising you, rebuking you, prospering you. Bottom line, God is with us. Shame on the devil. Shaitani aronathoni. Shame on the devil. Shaitani onethoni. We have an altar. His name is Jesus. We have a sacrifice. His name is Jesus. The first place that altar was erected was in that major. Listen to this. An altar is a place where the divine meets with humanity. Or humanity meets with the demonic power. But I want you to know Jesus placed himself in that 
nature so that God can meet, be with us can be for us God is for us I declare to this house God is for us I want to declare by the word of God God is for us and we will possess lands we will possess buildings we will have an inheritance for our children and our children children God is for us. And the God who is for us. He owns heaven. He owns the earth. Everything there is. It belongs to him. God for us. Hear me. Jesus placed your name. On that altar. I want all the orders. Go and collect all our names where, where they have been placed in those altars and we declare they don't belong there, they belong here. Our names are being removed from every altar of affliction. Our names are being brought to the right altar. Our names are not just written in the book of life. But they are also written in the altars of altars. And listen to this. Jesus as the sacrifice. The first place where the altar was erected was in the major. Number two. Altar number two. Come on, bring them here. Here is the altar. Here Father, we thank you. On the very night you were crucified, you took the cup. My God, you took the cup. And you said, This is my blood. Poured on the altar for a new covenant. All those names, where are they? Thank you. Give these elders a nice hand. Put them there. They are here. Come on, give them a nice hand. Now, if your name is here, it's not here. We'll have a bucket near those toilets that are stinking there. That's a altar. That is meant to make your life stink. Take your name there. Come on, guys, elders, we will want a bucket. I'll tell them to go for your name there. There. You can't bring it here, Huko. Altar number two. And the wilderness. Jesus fasted for 40 days. He placed himself as a sacrifice in the wilderness so that you don't go there. And the minute you go there, you come out of there quick. Why? That's the altar that gave us victory over the devil. 
I want to declare by the word of God on that altar on that altar all the wisdom of the devil all the temptations of the devil all the strategies of the devil came to naught I know you did know that he was erecting altars. His life was a life of altars. Because he wanted to make sure all the altars that would be erected to bring your life down are dealt with. I want to declare by the word of God all the schemes of the enemy contain you in the wilderness. All the schemes of the enemy to make sure that you backslide. Make sure that you go outside the will of God. Jesus placed himself as a sacrifice in the wilderness so that the devil would come and he would deal with him one to one so that you become a more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says, 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 57, Jesus leads you in a triumphal procession. You are alive ought to be victory upon victory. Because he offered himself as a sacrifice and dealt with the devil once and for all. It was an altar. He placed himself on the altar. And just like Elijah, when he showed up, all the other altars of the false prophets who do not work. I declare all the other altars from today will never work. Your name is not there. Your name is no longer there. Your name is on the altar of altars. And that altar is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. My name is not there. The name of my children is not there. My children, children. Thy names will never appear there. I declare by the word of God. Their names will remain on the altar. Where the book of life is read every day. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus. Altar number three. Altar number one. You meet it in Matthew chapter one. The major. Altar number two. Matthew chapter four. Luke chapter 4. That's in the wilderness. But altar number 3. Listen to this. Oh my God, I love this. You meet it in Matthew chapter 17. Jesus takes three of his disciples. And he goes and places himself on the mountain. The same mountain where Abraham went 
to sacrifice Isaac. O kirimaine kirea Ibrahimu adiete kuruta Isaac igogona. This is in Matthew 17. O do yoko kora deni wa Matthew. Matthew kuna mwaje. The kirea yo do you. When Jesus placed himself on that mountain of sacrifice. Deria Jesus eto ali kirimaine kio kio igogona. The Bible says. Mati koma kiga tiriri. All of a sudden. Oro remwe. The glory of God came. He was totally transformed. Listen to this. Totally transformed. He, there was light all over. The glory of God came. And the Bible says. All of a sudden. Moses could not be found. Elijah would not be found. Jesus was left alone. And there was a voice from heaven. This is my beloved son. Of whom I am well pleased. Here on that mountain, we received the glory of God. Come on, listen to this. Arise and shine, for the glory of God is rising upon you. I come to prophetically declare to someone here. Jesus is with you on that mount of sacrifice and Jesus in you is the hope of all glory Jesus in me is the hope of all glory whatever has been keeping you in darkness whatever out of darkness your name has been E it's no longer there arise and shine I declare arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine I declare to someone here you are no longer going to be hidden the time of your hiding is over I declare arise your potential arise gifting arise your anointing arise your ministry arise for the glory of Jehovah rises upon you did Jesus get hold I see him hold your hand and he is taking you to that mount that mount of glory and he is telling you you don't need Elijah you don't need Moses you don't need the rooms you don't need the law you don't need in the other voice the glory of God the glory of God the glory of God is rising upon you. Seven altars where Jesus placed himself to make sure all the seven altars that, that are raised against you through the demonic powers become Useless. All of them. Number one. Useless. Look at your neighbor. Preach to them now. And tell them the three. Three, the three. So far. Come on, tell your neighbor the three. Tell your neighbor the three. And tell them. Even the three. Even if they were just those three. But they are the three. 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 Altar number four. Luke 22. This is the one that we celebrate here. Luke 22. Verse 
call it the last supper Jesus is telling the disciples my body will be broken for you every single drop of my blood will fall to the ground and my blood speaks of better things than the blood of Abel the blood of Jesus has a voice if the blood of those animals they sacrifice whether in witchcraft or whether in underworld or in the cemetery if that blood has a voice Jesus blood has a bigger voice and listen to this Ephesians 1 7 the Bible says through the blood we have eternal redemption we have eternal redemption when Jesus blood was shed when his body was broken every single death of sin that you own was paid for. And that word redeemed. That word redeemed. It means to buy from a slave market. I am already redeemed. Let the devil say what he wants to say. But I want to declare. He knows very well. Jesus' blood purchased me in full. His body was broken so that mine may be whole. I am speaking healing. I'm speaking healing. I'm speaking healing. Healing over your body. The body of Jesus was broken so that you are and mine can be whole. Listen to this. Is anybody in this house? Is anybody in this house? Altar number five. We have an altar. His name is Jesus. We have a sacrifice. We have a sacrifice. And this sacrifice was placed in seven different places places to complete seven to complete sevenfold blessing against sevenfold curses can i declare to you shame on the devil tonight Shame on the devil tonight. Shame on the devil tonight. You have nothing to fear. You cannot fear because of the future. You cannot fear because of today. I want to declare by the word of God. The Bible says. This is the blood. Of my everlasting Covenant. Eternal covenant. Not seasonal. When things are good or things are bad. When things are bad, this covenant, this altar makes them beautiful. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. Next order. Matthew 26. This is where Jesus placed himself 
in the garden of Gethsemane he was sweating like drops of blood. My God, I love this one. Previously he had told Peter. Satan has wanted to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. And you are coming out of this. You are coming out of your weakness. You are receiving strength from above. Listen to this. On this altar, he became our strength. The disciples could not be able to pray. But Jesus prayed and the Bible says, an angel of the Lord came from heaven and strengthened him. Listen to this. That strength is for you and for me. He is our strength. I come to tell someone you are not going to be defeated. I come to tell someone your enemies will come one way. They will flee in seven days and find direction. Let the weak say they are strong. Oh. Is anybody here? He is our strength. He offered himself on that altar of Gestamon. He received the strength from above. And that strength gave him breakthrough. He was able to overcome the cross. I come to announce today in the name of the Father and of the Son where you have had no breakthrough. Receive strength. Receive boldness right now where your name was placed so that you become poor. You become weak. I come to declare strength and strength for breakthrough. I said strength for breakthrough. I said strength for breakthrough. I declare you will push the wall. You will make the walls fall. I come to declare you will pass through troops. You will just pass through troops. Through a big army. You will just have a breakthrough. I declare breakthrough. I declare breakthrough. If Jesus got breakthrough. Through the cross. I declare. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. That is fashioned against us. That shall ever prosper. I declare. Strength for breakthrough. Finances for breakthrough. Wisdom for breakthrough. Against those defilers and parasites. I declare wisdom for breakthrough so that you can have the right relationship. I declare to them strength, strength for breakthrough where you get valuable relationships in the name of Jesus. Watch this. Anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here? Number six. Altar number six. This is Calvary. 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 
This is one of the things that I love to teach most. How the altars. How, how the altar. That you call Jesus. Destroy so other altars. I guess it's because one of the reasons I have walked. These feet have walked in all those places. Every time I've stepped on Calvary. I see the devil strikes. No, no, no authority. Jesus paid the debt. And the authority of the devil was nullified. Is anybody hearing me? On that altar of Calvary, we not only had eternal redemption, but all authority of the devil over your life was nullified. Tell your neighbor to write in capital letters the devil is a trespasser in your life. And writing capital letters trespassers will be prosecuted. He has no right. He has no authority. He has no power. That's why I declare Every altar he erected becomes nullified. Then. That's why I wanted your name gotten from those altars. Prophetically. Because they don't belong there. Satan has no right to take your name. And place it in those halls. Whether it's through a handkerchief or, or, or your hair or whichever way. He has no right. He has no right. On Calvary, Jesus said it's finished. Tell your neighbor, finish. Tell your neighbor, finish. Tell somebody, finish. Quisha. Altar number seven. You meet it in Hebrews chapter nine and chapter ten. Hebrews chapter nine and verse fourteen. Jesus has died and he takes his blood to the altar in heaven. The Bible says he went and sprinkled his blood you know, on all the articles of that altar in heaven. To give you an eternal inheritance. Eternal inheritance. And listen to this. When he did that, the Bible says he sat at the right hand of God. And he waits. He waits for all his enemies to be put under his feet. Can I declare to you from today? From today, all your enemies, Rabba Saka, Rabba, oh yes, because of that order that we have. In Christ Jesus, I declare right now, God, 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 who corrupt Satan, very soon, under your feet. Stand up, we worship. If you believe in seriousness of God, you can't afford to move. Stand up, we'll worship. Give us worship. Give us worship. Give us worship.
From today. Kuma omodi. From today. Kuma omodi. From today. Kuma omodi. From today. Kuma omodi. That God. Moga boshio. That feeds your life. Oria ohea gamu torera wakugia kulia. Negatively. Nama udu ma mogaru. My God. Gaiwakwa. My God. Gaiwakwa. My God, that voice on account of this altar, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I declare that whether those voices come from the ancestral altar. Marine altars. Cemetery or graves. Satan is him devil worship. Ahoya shaitani, ahoya daimono. Or that altar of jealousy. Kana kiko gona keu kia oiru. I declare by the word of God whether that old comes through witchcraft or there is an order. We have an order. We have an order. And only us are allowed to feed from that order. Nobody else. Right now, your name is here. Jesus went with your name to 
that altar in heaven. And I'm declaring by the word of God. It will never again appear in an altar of affliction. Never. The blood of Jesus paid for us to the full. You wanted to party with us and you don't have the emblems of the Holy Communion, please raise up your hand. Someone will come. Mike, I'm not in hurry. This is, this is life changing. This is not just a service. Lives are being changed right now. Father in heaven, we bless you for your son. He is our altar. Sevenfold altar. Sevenfold altar. For sevenfold blessing. Nullifying all the altars of Balaam and Balak. We were meant to be cursed, we will be blessed. Where, where we are supposed to be cursed, we will be blessed. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, I thank you. Even as we partake of these emblems of Holy Communion. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Elders, I'm waiting for you. Get all of you as your cup. Take your cup. Take your bread. We partake the bread in communion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We partake. The cup. Cup of this everlasting covenant. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take and eat. Take and eat. Take and eat. Take and eat.
Shira, 
is not my portion. I bring somebody here on Sunday. Barrenness is not my portion. So be seated. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, praise him. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. 